Fuck yeah. Everybody, welcome. It's an adult video blog, and of course I cuss. Welcome, I'm AZD, a Razapar. Motherfucking deep as I'm here to help you out. This is a video blog for IMC Nation. This is for my tribe, worldwide IMC Nation tribe. Let's go. Uh, this is not for kids. It's for adults. You're responsible for your own condition. I'm talking to my people, so I use my language with my people. They get me. You don't need to get me. But if you do, you'll understand more about these things. I'm an expert in the art of love and the art of mind control. Those are the two things that there's nobody better than me on, on YouTube. You could YouTube everybody and anybody. Nobody, nobody understands the language of love the way I do. And nobody understands the language of the mind in relation to influence the way I do. Okay? The emotional language of communication. So I'm talking now to the warrior fighting monks of IMC Nation, the warrior beast, the tribal leaders and tribal council. Everybody, let's go. Pleasure to be here today. I've gone through many, many changes in the last 12 hours. I knew I would before I locked down last night. It was a known fact as I went to change on purpose. Okay, that, this is a, a thing I do. So here we go. Let's read. Let's read from this. I'm breathing truth. These next two... Um, statuses here, because I used to write these statuses, are really, really going to help you out. Here we go. The practice and the application of your imagination. You know when you practice a guitar, or you practice basketball, or you practice martial arts, practice yoga, the practice of your imagination. How does one practice their imagination? Well, we used to have an imagination exercise with Manu, where we would sit there with our eyes closed, and we would imagine... We would imagine with our eyes closed some sort of a cup, some sort of a drink. First, we would have to create the cup. You can see. First, we'd have to create the cup, okay, with our eyes closed. Give it a texture, give it a, everything, every kind of sensation you can give it. Then wait, then put a liquid in it, then feel the liquid, then smell the liquid, taste the liquid, play with the liquid, pour it out, change the cup, okay? And we would, we would do this mental exercise for an hour or so. Okay, another mental exercise we would do is, we would, imagination exercise, is we would, with our eyes closed the whole time, keeping our clothes on, with our eyes closed, we would shower. So with a bunch of people on stage, I know it sounds funky, but acting it has these exercises, okay? And these were Manu's exercises. So we'd be on the stage, you know, and we would close our eyes, and then, you know, if I was going to do it right now, then it would be uh, setting up the shower. That's it, I would just start. And we would then, with our eyes closed, practice taking a shower. That's the second exercise. Third exercise, I've never shared these things. Third exercise was we would get a fruit in our mind, like an apple, or a strawberry, or a peach, or a pear, or whatever you like, and we would then eat the, eat the fruit. The last exercise was a ball exercise. We would create a ball. What kind of ball? Any kind of ball, okay? Except my nutsack, not that kind of ball. Regular ball, just a ball. We would get, grab a ball, and in, in our imagination, with our eyes closed, we would play with this ball the whole time, okay? And we would do this for an hour or two sometimes, okay? So that's the practice of imagination. So you could say that the, this being you're talking to me, I've practiced the faculty of imagination since I was, actually before Manu, but when I got with Manu, I had a practice that I did. Like, every Wednesday was my class with Manu, right? So every single day I had a journal and I would write in there imagination exercises and I would give myself points depending on how many minutes I did it. So five minutes equals five points. Sometimes I only had five minutes, but I would do it. I would sit there after the shower or whatever and I would choose one of these exercises. But then I would... I ended up adding my own exercise to it where I would then look in the mirror and turn into a dragon or turn into a tiger. And those are the main animals I would use because I saw the power of my imagination. So there I was with no money. I'm about 20 years old, 19, 20 years old, I think. And I'm living by myself. I have no friends. I'm totally dedicated to my path of studying this magic I found this man have. It's like the same thing you study when you study me. I'm very magical. If you don't know, you don't know. That's the thing. See, with the way I speak about Manu, Manu had created the effect on me that I'm creating on the world. He was a wizard. I've never, look, man, I've never seen anybody like Manu. I know how great I am. But he was greater. 
in his communication. He was greater in his ability to, to create aesthetics. I'm trying to catch up to the guy in those things. At the same time, what he was, that's my chair, at, at the same time, what he was great at, and, and I believe I got this from him, because prior to him, I was under the, the it's called the tutelage, which means like the uh, mentorship of Ernie Reyes. I grew up with him. He taught me how to teach. See his face? That's the face. 23 out of 24 hours a motherfucking day. I've been questioning because I, I'm telling you, you want to know? In the last 12 hours, what I've been looking at? I've been looking at that I'm, I'm not teaching properly. Because the people that I care about the most are not getting yet at the level they should. And I've actually been thinking about that today when I was walking. I had to analyze where was my original. I know, look, in my head, I think I'm right. Everybody thinks they're right. Got it? And because I'm great at what I do, I am right. Like, that's, that's the reason why I'm right is that nobody else can fucking do it. So you're going to have to do what I tell you. You get that? That puts me in a very interesting fucking position. And in that if I'm fucking questioned, fuck you, go find it somewhere else. You're not going to find it somewhere else because I know what I can do. So I'm going to be right just by that. I know that. But that gives me a very strong ethical obligation to actually be right. Now, the thing is that my own personal values is to seek truth and rightness. So you're safe. You're safe having someone leading who actually outside of you in his most private moment is seeking that, that ultimate truth of, of reality. I'm not doing it because I want you to pay for me. I'm doing it because you're paying me because I'm doing that already. That's the whole point. That's, that's what this whole thing is, is that I'm already doing that. That's exactly what Manu told me. Keep doing your craft, perfecting your art, and people will pay you millions of dollars to watch you do, what, do it one day for free or what you do for free. I got obsessed. I got obsessed with the magic that this man created. I saw an enormous man who looked like a walrus who had the ability to beautify his environment. That's not a little thing to say. That's literally, ready? Every musician is trying to sound beautiful with music. Every makeup artist is trying to beautify the face. Every architecture is trying to beautify, like everything that man does, the professional is trying to bring beauty and aesthetic to it. That's what, that's what life is. Even Apple Computers is working on the sleek design of the next one. We don't, none of us want to have a grotesque, ugly ass thing in our hand. It makes a difference holding the, the machine. So I met a man who physically, very, very clearly looked like a giant, Fijian, overweight chief. If, I can't even say man because he carried himself like a chief. He looked like a big chief that you would see in a movie. Big Hefe. <laughs> Kahuna. His name is Kahuna. But it was not that. I was smart enough. I was aware enough. I was already on some sort of process on martial arts where I was looking. I was looking for answers. And the man showed up. First, I had heard of him. Then he showed up. And Ernie Reyes finished, Master Ernie Reyes, that's the proper term, Grandmaster Ernie Reyes. I just have a problem with the whole grand thing. Not, not it has nothing to do with it. It's just the way the martial arts is. Okay? So, in the martial that's a Grandmaster. Grandmaster Reyes. Okay? That's actually a big deal, just so you know, in that tradition. Like, in that tradition, that's a very big deal, what I just did or didn't do or say or didn't say. I know it's like it got lost, but when I was growing up, the wrong term in front of the, the, the wrong title in front of someone's name would result in a lot of push-ups and a lot of discipline, just so you know. Martial arts is a very funny game. It's supposed to get rid of the ego, but it creates the biggest egos anybody's ever seen. That, that was one of the turnoffs for me. I wrote it in a, in a hotel in um, Germany when I got to uh, be with the martial arts master. No, no, not Germany. Um, New York, Harlem. I did a show with um, Wesley Snipes, and he brought together all the greatest martial artists of the world. This is one of my greatest memories in my life. Right? And I remember sitting in the bottom of the hotel. I still remember the, the beginning of the verse. It was like, hey, my friend, have you heard? All these old school masters are so absurd. Okay? Because I, I remember. I was looking at the people whose books I had in my house. There was no internet. 
And I was like, oh my God, that's that guy. And then the dude started to kick. I remember, right? He did a back kick. His name was Heel Cho. This dude was just a monster like you've never seen. This video blog is, is, is a little different, okay? Let's get into this reminiscing thing, but it feels good for guys to talk like this. Dude, this guy, I gotta look him up again because since the, since the internet, I haven't even tried looking at him. That's like how long ago it is. Like since internet was created, at that moment, I, he was not in my consciousness anymore. This is how long ago this was. But this motherfucker was one of the... He was that motherfucker you would see in the movies, like the Jean-Claude Van Damme kickboxer, close your eyes, jump up and kick a fucking apple, split it with a fucking knife. And that's the guy. I know, I know guys like that. Oh my God, I saw him. I was like, that cannot be him, dude. And then I got to be like five feet from him on a hardwood floor like this, actually with a mirror like that, pretty close. Stretching before the performance. And I remember I got really close to him because I, I would do this thing. I would try to get as close as I can to feel the vibes of people. And so I was like watching him warm up. And the first thing I thought is he doesn't kick very high. I remember thinking that because that was one of the things we used to work on. We used to work on trying to kick as high as we can. And I was like, well, he doesn't kick very high, right? Then the motherfucker did a back kick where you spin and you, you kick with your leg. And I just remember the, the crisp... It's called a lockout of the foot, where that thing went. Whoo! I mean, that, I swear to God, you have to see it to believe it. I, I could do it. At the time. I'm surprised to still do it with the cardi pants on. But that thing is so sharp when that kick comes out. It would be like a samurai sword just slicing the air. How that would look? This motherfucker's leg went, whoo! and it sliced so fast, and it stuck. And I felt, I just felt, I felt that if that kick hit anything, block a rib. A car, it was going to blast right through it. The guy was so strong in his technique, right? But God damn, could he not fucking communicate? And that was getting to me, right? These guys were absurd. Hey, my friend, have you heard? These old school masters are so absurd. We would go places and oh, it was just terrible. So I was, I was so turned off. I still turned off to that shit, right? So, whoa, where are we at? It was the application of imagination. I meet, I meet this fucking man and he follows my instructor's speech. We were doing a, a whole uh, martial arts theater in San Jose. We drive through San Jose sometimes and I tell the guys, I go, I've performed here. I've performed there. I've performed in the biggest um, arenas, like the San Jose Arena, I performed there. This was one of those things. We did a theater, like a giant theater. Like if you want to go through to San Jose, it was all advertising shit. Martial arts theater. So Manu came down, my teacher, to do the final part with the actors and stuff. Like it was all martial arts. And then he was going to help us understand like the storyline because he was writing it, help writing it. And the first time this guy sat down, I remember it was in a martial arts school and they said, Manu wants to talk to everybody real quick. I was like, oh fuck. Because he would come and sit down and watch and talk to uh, Master Reyes. Then we all sit down and I remember I was sitting by a window with my friend, like, dude, this is Manu, like, we're going to get to hear him finally say something to us, right? And the dude walked in, kind of looked like Jabba the Hutt from Star Wars, kind of big, lumbering guy, came and he sat down, and he started. And I remember, he pissed me off right away. The first fucking two, three, four minutes of that fucking talk, he talked about how great my instructor was. And I was fed up with him at that time. You have no idea. Oh my God. We could not. It was like, it was, it, it's what happens between fathers and sons. We had a father son relationship, my instructor and I. And that's literally why I left in the way. I mean, it's like, it was with my, my dad. He was a martial arts dad. And I could not fucking stand the way that he was teaching. I was so critical of the way he was teaching everybody. But he wouldn't fuck with me. Believe it or not, my own instructor didn't fuck with me. He would leave me alone, but I didn't like the way he treated other people. But I wouldn't say anything. So then I would get on my teammates. His name was Andy. I'd be like, Andy, you fucking idiot. He's going to yell at you, bro. And it would piss me off because I could clearly see what was going on, right? So I was, I had, I had just been fed up six months of rehearsals for this fucking stupid show that I didn't want to fucking do, but I did at the same time. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Now this fucking mom is going to come and kiss his ass now too. Everybody kiss his ass. Your instructor, this and that, and I'm honored to be here for master. I was like, oh man, this guy's a fucking joke, right? 
And then he began. He gave his little intro. And then he began to talk to us about the process of the artist, he called it. And how sacred an artist is. How courageous you have to be to step up in front of the judgment of the entire world, knowing that A, they're going to be critical. B, even if you do well, they're going to be jealous. He started to speak about the artist in a way that I've never heard anybody speak before. He started to make us important. Ooh. He said the show is very important, but there is no show without the artist. And there is no artist without the process of the artist. An artist needs its process so that he can create. He's not a regular person. And he started to look at everybody and he told us, he said, you're not regular people. In fact, you guys are martial artists. And that was the first time that word was defined for me after probably 12, 13 years of doing martial arts at the time. He said, you guys are, mar no, 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 that would be wrong. That would be about seven, probably seven or eight years of doing martial arts at the time. He says, you guys are martial artists. He said, when you communicate, someone is wrong. Listen to that. He said, as a martial artist, when you communicate, someone is wrong on the other side. And he said, you have to consider, you have to consider the responsibility of an individual who trains his whole life to communicate and shut other people down. Your art is the art of destroying. He said it puts you in a very interesting position because you're going to have to create beauty with it now. Oh, man, I've never heard anyone talk like that. I can probably go through his whole speech right now. And I was just mesmerized. Mesmerized. Later on, I never forgave him for always, every time he would show up to speak, he would spend two to three minutes talking about my instructor every fucking time. I was like, dude, do you prepare a fucking speech? I would try to skip it. I would try to go to the bathroom because he started working with us a lot. But every, every, every fucking day, he would spend two minutes telling some shit. Really, later on, I realized what it was. It was, a, it was a technique of communication. He was not going to outshine the master in his own arena. Do you understand that? He did very well. He stepped up and he spent two to three minutes talking about the master. And you could see my instructor would sit there with his legs crossed and would just... <laughs> and he would go from that dark face and, and he would light this guy up, you know, and it would be all good moods and shit. And then he would begin his talk. And then he would always end giving props to the master. You can't outshine the master. That's why when I showed up, to his domain. Oh, that motherfucker's different here. Right? I thought he would be that sweet gentle giant that I'd seen. All polite and shit. No. No, 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 no. If you wanted Martin's respect, then you would commit yourself to what he had committed himself to. Because he didn't have time for anything else. Right? You met Manu as an acting director. You met Manu as a master of communication. You didn't meet him any other way. You couldn't meet him any other way. Right? He didn't have any other relationships that didn't exist. Finally, since we're on the subject, for whatever reason, I just realized last night I was playing the song. Oh, well, that would make sense now, actually. Okay. You know, I, I've had dreams of Manu many times, and um, I don't know how these things work. But one of the dreams that was really, really significant it's coming up right now, was I was somewhere and then I ran into my, my friend who was a student and he said, hey, you know, Manu's, Manu's alive, he's here. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So he took me through this house and there he was in this like, it looked like a, um, like a li ancient library kind of, right? Like it's very, like a lot of books, very dark. And he was laying there, kind of like when he was dying, I saw him in the same position uh, towards the end of his life. He's kind of laying there, but he was on a couch. And I was like, you're alive? What are you doing? And he was like, yeah, you know, he started giving me this whole fucking story that doesn't matter. But he did do something. He said, pick up, because this is what he would do with me. He said, pick up that book over there. And I picked up this giant like dictionary and I was flipping through it and there was a, a word that was circled like that. And he said, look at that word. 
And I remember looking at the word. Now, check this out. The word was delirium. Okay? Delirium. You can look it up yourself to, to see what the fuck that means. Right? And in that dream, his final words to me were, the world is in delirium, Arash. Get him out of it. Okay? Now, I've gone through, I'm going to end this video, I've gone through some major experiences in the last 24 hours personally. Right? And I have a, I have a new commitment, really I do, to help whoever wants help, really, is, is the answer to that. Whoever really is truly seeking that, that level of help. Of course, you have to pay for it, because that's what that's the way we live in, the IMC Nation. We have friends and enemies and you know it's, it's a real it's a real it's a real life story of a real life person who's helping real life people who have real lives who help other real life people <laughs> that's what we do okay we don't settle for tyranny we don't settle for people telling us what we can do what we can't do this is real this is a real life story that they make movies about one day we are on that planet there is suppression it is the last stand humanity is is waking up some of us have been awake for a long time, and some of us have certain technologies that we can use to get ahead. And every man in IMC Nation has got to go to rise to the top of the field, because that's how you change the world. You don't change the world from the bottom of the field, you change it from the top. So you've got to rise to the very top. You've got to be the best and fuck the rest. IMC Nation.